young cowboy named Billy Joe grew restless on the farm. A boy filled with wanderlust who really meant no harm. He changed his clothes and shined his boots and combed his dark hair down. And his mother cried as he walked out. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. He laughed and kissed his mom and said, You're Billy Joe's a man. I can shoot as quick and straight as anybody can. But I wouldn't shoot without a cause. I'd gun nobody down. But she cried again as he rolled away. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Good morning, everybody. It's about almost 5.30 in the morning right now. And today I'm tackling what to my understanding is probably the most renowned slab of meat in the barbecue world the almighty brisket everyone's sleeping right now so um, I have to be outside to talk about this inside I've got my brisket trimmed up um, it's a little rough <laughs> well this is my first time ever trimming a brisket uh, so keep that in mind and uh, anyways, I trimmed off, I wanted about a quarter inch of fat on the fat side. And I trimmed up the deckle, uh, took off much of the silver skin, and mainly just trimmed off any excess fat, hard fat, gristle, and all of the kinds of things that aren't going to render. I then rubbed that with a 50-50 mix of salt and pepper. And, uh, yeah, I'm letting it get up to room temperature right now to get a more even cook, as recommended by Barbecuing with Franklin. And uh, I'm about to get it out here and throw it on here as soon as this smoke thins out and I uh, get my fire managed a little bit more. This is my third attempt at barbecuing, the first being uh, St. Louis-style spare ribs, second pulled pork from a picnic, and now, I think it's time we tackle a brisket. I don't know. Uh, I've watched some good stuff out there on YouTube on how to do this. Uh, shout outs to How to Barbecue Right or Barbecue Done Right. Sorry, I know I butchered your name just then. Um, and Barbecuing with Franklin, who owns what I believe is the most successful barbecue restaurant in America. Anyways... I've got the smoker out here uh, fired up today. I've got it started with charcoal, and I'm adding pieces of hickory in there. Along with that, I'm trying to get it to go full hickory. Um, in the past, I've been using a mix of charcoal with throwing pieces of hickory and other woods in there for the smoke, but I'm going to try to keep this fire going purely on wood today. I've got a couple of stacks over there. Um, I'm going to be running it at about 250 degrees, so with the thermometer here it's about 50 degrees higher than what it really is down there where the meat is, and so I'm going to keep that steady about 300. Smoke, I need that to thin out more. That was a mistake that I had on the first attempt with those ribs. I had way too much of a smoke ring in there, it was overpowering. Well, we're about 30 minutes into the cook now, and I just reviewed the footage on my camera roll and realized that my phone is doing the... Sometimes it doesn't record audio with the video. That's why I have some random clips sometimes that come out with blank audio. It's ridiculous. Anyways, to rephrase what I was trying to say, I've got the uh, point on this side towards the firebox. I've got the flat in there. As you saw in the video, fat side up, okay? Um, so most of the heat's going to come into the thick part, 
come around it, swirl around, and then we got the flat over here, in between here, not too close to the stack, and not too close to the firebox, so we're not getting it burnt on the ends there. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about my uh, camera, it acts stupid sometimes. We're currently having a little fight here to keep the temperature up. It's dropped about 50 degrees, and, well, it's 50 degrees from where I need to be at. So, I'm over here. I've got the airway completely open. I've been stoking this up the best I can. I've got two sticks in there right now. Um, this wood is it still has some moisture in it, which is pretty ridiculous, being that you pay twenty dollars out here for a cubic foot uh whatever though no need to complain we just gotta deal with it the best we can well it started raining on us here so i had to move the operations under cover but, uh, yeah. Thankfully, I had some 2x4s laying around. I was able to get this thing up here by myself. Alright, so we just hit the 4 hour mark here. We got super heavy smoke rolling right now. That's because I just threw a, a log in. I'm really trying to battle the smoke and keep it down, but. Anyways, I'm about to open up here so we can spread some with some apples, uh, apple juice. Oh wow, that's actually looking looking okay. Just gonna give a little spritz, make sure we're not drying out anywhere. Definitely don't want this to turn out dry. Okay, so we're a little over five hours into this cook. I went ahead and checked our temperatures. Internal temp is between 150 and 165 in some areas so I'm gonna give about 30 more minutes so, uh, so make sure we hit that 165 internal temp and then we'll wrap it and finish it off we're at the 5 hour 45 minute mark we got it wrapped and going back in for a few more hours till we reach about 200 internal temp there's a man going around taking names and he decides who to free and who to blame everybody won't be treated all the same there'll be a golden ladder reaching down when the man comes around the hairs on your arm will stand up at the terror in each sip and in each sup. Will you partake of that last offered cup or disappear into the potter's ground when the man comes around? All right, we're at the 11 hour mark right here. Well, once again, the camera failed to record audio, so I'll just have to say it now. The brisket is currently inside in a cooler uh, resting. I'll be doing that for the next two hours at least. Um, it's really important that you do that. Let it pull in all those juices and relax and distribute the heat evenly. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back in two hours. All kinds of renderings here and a pretty good little mess to clean up. That's cool though. I like the the preservative we've built up on the inside there. That flavor looks good. This is the Oklahoma Joe's Highlander Offset Smoker, by the way. It's it's pretty nice. I do recommend it. It was only about three hundred dollars, and um, I'm pretty impressed. Today. We got a smoke ring there. Okay. 
well, I think for the first brisket ever, this is a pretty good success. Uh, a little bit too much fat was the biggest takeaway. But it's tender, um, not too smoky or anything. It uh, passes the bend test. It may be a little bit too tender, I don't know. Maybe a little slice here. Let's see that. But, uh, yeah. I'm not uh, disappointed in this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.